All right, we just calculated our test statistic and we looked up the critical value and we noticed that the absolute value of the test statistic is larger than the critical value. Hopefully you remember that that means that we are going to end up rejecting the null hypothesis. And so that means that when we find our p-value, we should definitely get a value smaller than 0.10, which was alpha. So let's see if that happens. I'm on D2L. I'm going to click the content tab for our class and come down to the section on websites for calculating the p-value. And you'll notice that I have a section 9.1 p-value for two proportions from two samples. Let's go to this website. Here's all you have to do. Type in your first sample number. That's x. That's x1. So we type in 227. Type in the sample size, 2075. And then you do the second proportion, 53 and 390. OK? It's a 10% significance level, and it's one-tailed. And so because of the less than sign for our alternate hypothesis. So that's what all we have to type in. It will then calculate our test statistic, negative 1.51, as we found. And notice that the p-value is 0 0.06552, which is significant at p is less than 0.10. So as we predicted, we got a p-value of 0 0.06552. And as predicted, that was significant. It was less than 0.10. So we do reject the null hypothesis. So there we go. Um, the computer wanted me to round to three decimal places, so the final answer is 0 0.065. Make sure you check carefully what you need to round to when you're doing the problem. All right, so what does this mean? Well, we're definitely going to reject the null hypothesis, so we can eliminate those two answer choices. There is sufficient evidence to support the claim that commercial truck owners violate laws regarding front license plates at a higher rate. That is correct. Remember that that was our alternate hypothesis. If we rejected the null hypothesis, then that means we would accept the alternate hypothesis, which is that commercial trucks would have a higher rate than passenger cars. Okay, I'm actually going to stop this video here. In the next section, we're going to look at how to construct a confidence interval for this test.